I'm a long-term investor. I basically based my investments decisions on big tech, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, NVIDIA, advanced micro devices, but I sold them all two weeks ago, and I'm following the big money. I'm following the smart money. I'm recognizing that Tim Cook has recognized that Apple is in a bad position with its reliance of 80% of its production coming out of China. We have just experienced what the problem is when you depend on someone for everything. Tim Cook has opened up three new factories in India, and I'm going to follow him there. I believe that India is, if not going to become the largest factory of the, of the world, they're going to be one of the top three. And I'm going to share with you how I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm also looking into Vietnam. We have to diversify away from China. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. I have been making my case for over a year now that you need to get out of China, that China is going to fail because of their mismanagement of a situation. This is nothing new. Do you remember the name Eastman Kodak, Polaroid? Remember Xerox? Remember Sears and Roebuck? Well, countries fail. Fun countries screw it up as well. And China has screwed it up. They overbuilt their real estate. They they devalued their money. They, ha they are in a bad position. They're misreacting to the COVID virus and big money is trying to find their way out. And I am also doing that. I'm recognizing that some of our major manufacturers, such as Apple, has recognized that we can't be so t solely dependent on our product from a country like China, who is openly aggressive to us and uh, making the statements that we're going to bury you in the future. And if, in fact, we want Taiwan, we'll just fly over and take it. And then our president just uh, this Sunday said that is going to mean war and that's going to involve, involve troops. Well, if I'm Tim Cook, if, I, if I'm anybody, if I'm Nike, if, if I'm anybody who's manufacturing in China, I'm saying I got to get out. And so I did my research and I decided I needed to find where they're going to go. Well, yeah, they might come back to the United States with the, the benefit of 3D printing and robotics, but you aren't going to make socks that way and you aren't going to make tennis shoes and you're probably not going to be able to make uh, Apple phones. So you've got to find cheap labor and that takes me to India. So my fr that's my first look. I went and found a video that I, that, basically explain to me my uh, China's relationship with India and India's relationship with China. I learned that they have a border dispute that's been going on for a number of years. I remember once when I read that China was uh, potentially building some missile launching uh, facilities out at that border. I've learned more about that, and I'm not going to go into detail on it. I'm going to show you a part of a video, and then I'm going to put a link to the full video where this young man does a wonderful job of explaining what's been happening the next last five years and what he thinks and what I think is going to happen the next five years. So watch this. China plus one strategy. In simple words, we all know that companies from all across the world have their manufacturing hubs in China. So when COVID happened, the supply chain all across the world went for a toss because they were over dependent on just one country, which was China. To make matters worse, China came up with something called the zero COVID policy. The new figures show the growing economic damage wrought by the country's ongoing COVID-19 lockdowns. Beijing's hardline zero COVID strategy could ultimately lead to empty shelves in stores all over the world. And because of the zero COVID policy, even now, thousands of companies are facing supply chain issues. So a partnership of 18 economies, including India, the US and the EU, have unveiled a roadmap for building a collective, long-term, resilient supply chain to actually decrease their dependencies on China. Now, although this was coined in 2013, it's only after the pandemic that it actually became a serious strategy to be pursued. And what this means is that, instead of just China, these companies would invest in one more country as an alternative so that they could protect their supply chains from disruption. 
So now, we are not competing with China, but other Asian countries like Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand and Bangladesh. And this is where we have something called the Production Linked Incentive Program. And if you've been following Think School already, you know that PLI schemes are nothing but government incentives that decrease a company's barrier to enter a particular country. For example, if Apple wants to move from China to India, it needs to make thousands of crores of investment, needs to buy a huge piece of land, it needs to import a lot of equipment and then hope to make a profit. But this is where the government of India would set some benchmark for these manufacturers in exchange for incentives. For example, if they produce 8,000 crore worth of iPhones in India, then they'll be allowed to get a 4 to 6% cashback. And this could save them hundreds of crores. On top of that, for some companies, the government might waive off import duty on equipments, give a discount on the land, and sometimes may not even charge taxes until three years of their operation just so that they could break even. Add that up with cheap labor, and suddenly, India becomes an extremely lucrative market for companies. As I said, China is going down. I just don't think there is any question to that. Uh, I, and I don't think I'm in that camp by myself. The camp I think I'm in by myself, though, is what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to sit on the side in cash like I am? Or are you going to find ways to invest your money? Again, if China's going down, who's coming up? And I think it's it's the second largest population in the world, and that's India. They have more of a de democracy. Uh, unlike Vietnam, who still operates under a communist system, I don't know if we want to get back into that real deep. I think the better choice is India. So what I've done is I've done my research. I've gone to Seeking Alpha. I've, I've focused on some particular individuals who do some work in the Indian ETFs. I'm not in a position where I know the the biggest Indian companies. When I when I do my research, they they speak in a different language, meaning uh, their finances are different. There's conversion rates. They talk about rubles and 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 core and and I don't understand that. So I'm looking to ETFs to find uh, my best place. Here are the two ETFs that I'm looking at right now. Okay, this is always my first stop of doing my research, and that's Seeking Alpha. Uh, I've identified two stocks, INDY and INDA, um, that are ETFs in this field. And so I came here to to get a, a feeling of what they are. What I learned, and I learned it mostly here by going to Michael Grades. He's a CFA, a certified um, a financial analyst, is that uh, this is their um, S&P 500 of, of India, and it's a little heavy in, um, in finances. Uh, he tells us down here that, that they, they're they're geared heavy towards financial stocks. I'm not really, that doesn't excite me. Um, but at, at the other hand, uh, I have, I'm gaining an understanding of what they do. So that's INDY. The other one that I'm interested in is INDA. Um, this is also an, an ETF. And I would encourage you to, to use your Seeking Alpha and go through here and get an understanding of, of, of how they differ and what they do. What I'm doing here is a long-term investment. Do I believe I'm going to get a 10x out of this? No. But what I do believe is it's a lot, of, it's a lot better place for my cash than in cash. Um, I believe that as these move... Uh, or as there is a move away from China, the world's going to recognize that Tim Cook and probably Microsoft and any number of other people are going to put their manufacturing facilities in places like India as opposed to China. I, I suspect, I know Nike has opened some plants up in Vietnam. So as investors, if we know something's going down, we need to figure out what's going up. Now, what I also want to show you is on my Moomoo charts. This is uh, my Moomoo chart on INDA. Um, and you see it has a interesting feature here 
which it is calling it a, um, a arc bottom. And uh, it's predicting then where in fact this is going to go uh, from there. And you can see it's above the 200-day the moving average, it's above the 50, and it's trading around the 9-day average here. What I saw here is it gives us uh, the start time on, on, the, um, on the, the bowl, and it's a rising pattern, and its probability of being accurate is 93%. Tells me it's the support price in this bowl is $43.40, and then it has upward pressure at $44.95. Uh, so I went in today and bought some, and uh, this is going to be my first entry into the Indian uh, arena, if you will. Now, what I wanted to also show you, I went to this VS up here on your Moomoo Moo chart, and I put it in here, and I have, I'm going to compare the, um, the INDA to several other averages, and I'll show you that. What I'm showing you here is a comparison of the INDA, INDY, and the YXI, which is a short of China, and the S&P 500. We start all on March 30th, 2022, and we move across. And, and the one at the top is the short of China, and you can see it has performed the best of all of them, and the one that has formed the worst is the S&P 500. Now I want to bring it down to a shorter period of time. We're here, we're at six months. Let's look at three three months. Now let's look at that short on China is outperforming. And now let's look here. These are the two INDY and uh, uh, INDA. They're both up about 6% from um, that would be June the 27th. Now let's bring it down into a shorter period of time of one month. Now the separation is even greater. And now we have um, the uh, China up on top. The, the INDY and the INDI are, are basically the same, and the S&P is down here. So if I'm moving money out of my tech stocks and I'm, I'm wanting to put it someplace that has a potential to grow, uh, conversely to where the S&P 500 is going, my first choice is to short China. My second choice is to go long India. And I have the two stocks. I'd encourage you to look deeper into INDA and INDY. I'm not saying put all of your money there. I'm going to continue to look for places where I can park my investments until the, my, my Apple, my Google, my Amazon, uh, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA come back into favor. And they will come back into favor because they are going to be the dominant players in artificial intelligence, machine learning, and, and quantum computing because it's all about big data. And we know who has the data, and we know who the best processors of the data are, but we now is not the time to be there. If you had told me three years ago when I started this YouTube channel, three years ago will be in November, that I would be talking about moving my money to places like India, away from China, um, dealing with a a war in Ukraine, in Russia, I'd say those things aren't going to happen, but they did, and they are. And I, I just, I, I have to defend myself in saying, yeah, I'm a flip-flopper. Um, when the world changes around me, and my God, it has changed so much in, in just since March of 2020, just look at how much, how the world has changed in that short period of time. Um, and it's going to keep changing that rapidly. Uh, something's going to happen. Vladimir's going to do something. Xi Jinping's going to do something. Some, something's going to happen in the next six months, and we'll look back and say, wow, 
I never had no idea. So it's important that you connect the dots. It's, it's important that you watch the news. It's important that you read and you understand the world that's around you. Again, um, uh, three years ago, to say that India needs to step up, uh, Malaysia needs to step up, Vietnam needs to, Taiwan, that these people need to replace China. Let's face it, China screwed it up. They, they grew too fast, they, they built real estate, they devalued their currency, they've got citizens running on their banks, they've got them locked up because COVID, they're, they're in a, a, a historic drought, and, and they depend on rice, the most water-dependent crop in the world. I don't know what else could happen to make things more bleak in China right now. So I've got to get away from it. Tim Cook's recognizing he's got to get away from it. And I, be I believe every um, major corporation in this world, from John Deere Tractor to Procter & Gamble, is saying, do we have any exposure to China right now? Do we have any exposure to Russia? We need to get away from it. Okay, that's my rant today. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. We'll see. Hell, I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Thank <music> you.